Greetings. Several people have suggested that I create a video showing how you can build your own current limiting device to give you an extra margin of safety and peace of mind when you're working on amplifiers. This is the unit that I've uh, been using for many years on every, uh, pretty much every electronic device that I work on. Uh, consists of a, about a 250 watt bulb and the larger the wattage the better in this situation a porcelain lamp base and an electrical receptacle and a three wire grounded plug. I think a lot of people fail to understand that uh, outlets are polarized for a reason. The narrower prong uh, connects to a black wire. This is the hot uh, connection. This is where the 110 volts resides. The wide plug hole is for a white wire which is what we would call a common wire and this one I guess most people realize is for the green wire or the ground. Okay so wide is white. Now let's take a look at a little schematic I've drawn up. Now this is a picture of the receptacle. Common is white. It's the wider of the two prong inlets. The smaller one is the black hot wire and green is at the bottom. Now here's my three wire plug with the cable coming out of it. The narrower of the two prongs is the black wire and that I run through my bulb. This will be through the bulb base that you buy. In my case it's a porcelain one. So you go in one lead of the bulb base and out the other the black wire will come over here and then go to the narrower of the two receptacle holes. The common is the green wire. It will come around here to the uh, green or common ground hole on our receptacle. And the wide prong is the white wire which goes to the common wide receptacle hole. So two of the three wires go continue uninterrupted. It's almost like an extension cord here from this plug to this receptacle with one difference and that is the black hot wire is forced to pass through the bulb before it can get over here to the receptacle. Now how does this work? Well since the current has to pass through the bulb before it can get to the device that you plugged into the receptacle, uh, this bulb prevents a huge flow of current. It's sort of like a restrictor on the uh, flow of electrons that go to the device. If you develop a dead short over here in the device, as I will demonstrate soon, uh, the bulb will flash bright, as bright as it can be, and will warn you that there is a dead short, and it will also prevent a uh, huge flow of electricity here that can cause damage to the device or to you or scare the heck out of you. Okay, so this bulb then takes all the heat, literally, uh, and all the electricity and it actually works as a warning bulb at the same time. Now if the three wire plug that you're using is not polarized, it, as you notice in this case, both of the blades are the same width. That doesn't matter because look, if I set it up here with the uh, diagram that I've drawn, this should be the white wire and this over here should be the black wire. Let's use an ohmmeter and see if that's the case. Okay, I have the ground lug at the bottom like in the drawing and the right hand blade should be uh, black which is hot. I've gone over here to the black wire and as you can see there are zero ohms. There is continuity. If I go to the other prong as you'll see there is no connection. So even though the blades are not different size or polarized it doesn't matter. You can trust the color of the wires to be correct because this lug down here serves to polarize it. It can only go in one way with this one being black and hot, this one being white and common. Also I strongly recommend 
uh, as high a wattage bulb as possible. In this case, it's a 250 watt photo flood light. Okay, so this is used for, uh, in photography studios. If you don't have access to something like that, you can always go to Home Depot and get a 250 watt, uh, one of those outdoor floodlights and put it in. The reason you want a real high wattage bulb is the higher the wattage, the lower the resistance of the bulb. And you really don't want a lot of resistance because then you're going to cut down on your voltage uh, to your device and you're going to cause it to uh, act up. So the lowest possible resistance is what you're looking for, which would be the highest wattage bulb. Okay, and 250 is about it. Now we simply plug the current limiter into either an extension cord or into the wall outlet and then we plug our amplifier into the receptacle. Okay, here we have a snazzy old Premier amp plugged into the current limiting device. Let me uh, switch the amp on and we'll wait a few seconds for it to warm up. You'll notice that the light bulb doesn't glow at all simply because the amp is really not drawing enough current to illum illuminate the bulb. Okay, and the amplifier functions just as it should. Uh, there's no change in it because it's plugged into the current limiter. Okay, let's set up a worst case scenario test here. I've got my current limiter plugged into the wall, 110 volts. Probably about 30 amps uh, can flow before the circuit breaker will flip, which can cause all sorts of damage to an amplifier or any other electronic device. Plugged into my uh, current limiter is this extension cord with these two alligator clips on the end. Now what I'm going to do is short it with this screwdriver. I think we all know, we've probably done this at some time or other, when you short across 110 volts with a screwdriver, it's no fun at all. A very loud noise, pop, flash, you arc well the uh, screwdriver to the alligator clip. All sorts of bad things can happen, okay, and including to you if you're grounded. So I'm going to do this right now in front of you and you'll see what happens. As you can see, virtually nothing happened. There's no, no electrical arcing, no damage. It's all very quiet, very passive. But the bulb comes on to absorb all the current and to tell us that a dead short situation has arisen. If it were a partial short, the bulb would come on not quite as bright, but it would come on. Okay, so that would warn us. We have a partial short. Unplug this thing. Check it out. So as you can see, this is a pretty darn near foolproof method of um, saving yourself and your equipment uh, and your, the device you're working on uh, and I just don't see any downside to it. It's easy to make and I use these, uh, this particular device religiously. Well that about does it for this video. Now everything I've said uh, refers to electrical supplies here in the United States. The 110 volt, 60 cycle and all that. People in Europe uh, you may still be able to make a device like this and use it. Uh, I don't know if your uh, polarizing scheme is the same as ours. You need to check into it. But uh, for American uh, wall current, uh, this device is just the greatest, simplest thing in the world to protect you and the, your equipment. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this, found it interesting. Please consider subscribing to my channel. And regardless, I hope to see you again in the near future. Bye, and thanks for your time and interest.